Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. It's Mochi Chat. That's right. We're going to be talking about all the thoughts inside that tiny little brain uh, that are inside Kyle's apartments, all the things he sees. If, if cats could talk, uh, they'll talk here. Uh, no, it's actually local chat. Sorry to disappoint. Joining me this week is the one and only Kyle Bailey. Hi. Second a, time this week. I'm famous pumped. cat wrangler. Uh, Kyle Bailey, uh, also famous p pussy wrangler. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, I gotta say, like two seconds in, I wanted to say the P word, and then I was like, keep it in, keep it in. So thank you for breaking the P seal. Ooh, sorry, I love breaking the P seal, you know, when the, when the shipment gets in from your favorite uh, Twitch, Twitch lady. <laughs> um, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, we're uh, we're here early to talk about video games uh, and all sorts of things. Uh, do we have anything in the chit chat section? No. Oh, drink. Drink is in the chit chat. We section. do. What does drink mean? We do, gentlemen. I I have something that I've wanted to do recently, and I decided now's a good time to do it with everybody. Uh, I have the latest viral drink concoction, adult oh. beverage called gator wine have you guys oh, heard of this yes. from uh, from binging with babish yeah he he did it it was also on tiktok and various things but basically it is it is half red wine half blue gatorade and the thing i i first saw this on tiktok and it was a, a wine sommelier being like why are you people doing this to me okay i guess i'll try it and he drank it and he was like this is actually kind of good. Uh, <laughs> and Benji with Babish loved it. So uh, here we go. This is a Gator Wine first taste test. Oh, fuck. That is really good. Uh, <laughs> it's basically like it's 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 like 99 percent wine and there's a little bit of Gatorade in it, but it also removes any of that like bitter or harsh edge to Ooh. red wine. Mm. So it just makes it That's like ten good. times easier to drink. It's can we do it's very can good. we can we do a taste testing during extra life? Because I want to try. Yes. It. All right. Yeah, um, I'll put it on the list for sure. Uh, uh, Karen's dad is a really big red wine guy, and I really want to just take a bottle and empty some of the wine out and add blue Gatorade, and then is it blue Gatorade, right? Yeah, it's blue Gatorade, and yeah. and just bring the, that over one night. Like reseal it, bring it over one night, be like, "Oh, try this new new wine I got." Um, is it something it with tastes, the electrolytes little, like, and the tannins? Probably. It it, it probably <laughs> reduces it. It actually cancels out the tannins. It's uh, negative and positive charged ions. It kind of tastes like sangria. Like it just adds a, like a like a fruity undertone to it. And then, mm. like I said, it just it mellows it out. So it's not harsh. It's wow. it's pretty good. It's wild. It's great. Um, I'm glad we could do that. I have a drink, which is half limoncello, half cherry juice. Um, it's very watered down limoncello oh. because it turns out actual limoncello is so fucking sugary. Uh, it is yeah. very, very sugary. And I made a big batch of it and I was like, this is too sugary to drink normal, like on a normal basis. So I like when I made the orange cello, I like heavily watered it or he heavily cut the sugar. And now, now basically, I've made like a lemonade uh, out of Everclear and lemon peels. So, okay, wait, but nice. your your limoncello does have alcohol in it, right? Yes, Everclear. I soaked uh, the the lemons, lemon peels in uh, Everclear okay, for thirty days. Same with the orange. Uh, thirty days. It. Wow. Yeah. So it's best time long. to start making le limoncello is yesterday. Uh, yeah. <laughs> But it was worth the wait. It's pretty good. I don't think I'll end up making it again because it's, it's not quite my drink, but I might just make like soak the lemons and do a tiny bit of sugar and, and do that yeah. sort of bigger drink. Because that, that Did you have to good. do like the the valve top and all that shit? No, no. Uh, it's just in mason jars. I just put them in mason jars. Yeah, they easy. don't. That's easy. Yeah, there's no uh, uh, reaction or anything. Not like when I make uh, love. Uh, oh, yeah, no. Because the alcohol's already there. You're not making the alcohol. You're just like steeping Correct. it. Yeah, I do have one of those setups because when I make hot sauce, I do. I think it's like two weeks. The peppers sit and they. Yeah. It's always fun to go over Disgusting. and like nudge the jar, and then you watch the it burp <laughs> itself, and then like yeah. it suddenly smells like peppers. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I do that to you at extra. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you always do. It doesn't smell like peppers though. Um, <laughs> folks, uh, thank you for joining us. Well, thank you. That was a fun, fun time. See you later. Um, 
we've been playing video games this week. Ian Gibson, I think you've been playing the same video game as me, unless Kyle has hidden it and it's actually Mirror's <laughs> Edge. Um, it's going to jump out. Yeah. 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 Um, Star Wars Outlaws is yes. not out yet. But no, it is out. Is it? I it's thought out. it came it out on the 30th. Yeah. It's it came out for for premium edition or Ubisoft. Oh Connect. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's my joke. Is it's not officially release date out for everybody yet. It is the three days yeah, early still. Um, I yeah. think you also did the smart thing, which you turned me on to, which is pay seventeen dollars for this video game. Yeah, seventeen ninety nine per month for Ubisoft Connect Plus, and that gets you a majority of the Ubisoft games day one and the early access. So it was yep. like, why the fuck would I pay? $110 for this game to get early access or even $70 on well, release day when I can just pay $18. I'm, I pl- paid $18 and then if I want to extend my month, I can pay the $70 for the game and it's still less than paying for the $110 yes. one. So I'm like, what yeah. is I for 3 days the 18 like I almost spent that 110. It's crazy. <laughs> I was uh, Yeah, it's just so fucking dumb. It was so I, I wouldn't say dumb, but it's just it's wild that more people are not taking advantage of this. Yeah, agreed. Um, okay, Star Wars Outlaws. Um, I don't. How should we do this? What's you want to hit general impressions first? Um, how far are you in? I'm probably nine to ten hours in. In. I am. I am about two to three hours in. I haven't left Canto Blight yet, but I think I'm about to. Oh, you haven't even left. Canto I think I'm like yet. Yeah. Do we want to let's do let's do tweet impressions. So you have a 140 character tweet size. Give me give me your impression first. Um, I love it. It's the best Star Wars game in a very long time. Uh, it has its problems, but the base game is really fun and enjoyable, and it makes up for any issues I've had for it so far in playing. Uh, sorry, I, I don't know if we got an answer. Kyle, are you are you playing this game? Uh, no, you guys were talking about buying it cheaply. I am waiting for it to actually just go on sale like oh, in smart. a year or something. I have I have very little interest yeah. in playing this game. Uh, just. I would rather hear you guys talk about it. Um, my 140 character tweet impression of this game is. This is a very middling ass game. It is hard for me to find any enjoyment or reason to play it. And I think your reaction to it really depends on how much you are okay with the current state of video games, like AAA games. I'm surprised you're enjoying this this much because this this feels like a solid seven at fucking best. This it game. is a solid seven at fucking best. But as someone who absolutely hates the Jedi Survivor games, this is like it just feels very similar really but, but not it as just good feels but not so as good. much better it feels so much no, better than those games. okay see that's fucking crazy because i don't like the jedi survivor games either but those games are definitely better than this one oh, and just... they feel very similar it's just one you're a jedi and the other one you're a fucking weirdo little stealth person i guess i don't know i i'm i'm having an absolute blast with this game i really did not think i was going to like this game at all um that's and, and i'm that's having fair. an absolute blast with it it's uh, i've had a couple issues like uh one of the very first people i talked to loaded into a cutscene, loaded out of the cutscene, and i couldn't move but since you have that little pet mm-hmm. with you i made my i needed a hundred credits to re-talk to the guy and so i yes. sent uh nix the little pet out he grabbed the right amount of money to give me a hundred credits and i just clicked the right stick again to talk to the guy and it put me back into the cutscene were you and then spit were me you out. stuck in the in the cutscene or just i wasn't spit stuck in the cutscene cut i just couldn't control my character after it took me out oh. of the cutscene oh okay gotcha but so i was still in range to just to, yeah. re-talk to them um yeah it it, it had, definitely has some issues with it uh but as far as like glitches or anything, I haven't come across anything that has like, other than like my character warping weirdly or like I miss missed a landing on some sort of stupid rock, uh, and like my characters jumped mm-hmm. over sideways. There hasn't been anything like game breaking or super buggy uh, in, in my run. Yeah, um, I haven't I haven't had anything like that, but it just feels everything feels like it is trying to hit. And the um, MVP. Are you guys familiar with that like business product term MVP? It means like minimum viable product. Oh, as yes. in, 
as in like, hey, we want to add this feature or build out this software. We don't need to build it perfect. We don't need to hit all customer bases and types from the first start. We just need to hit the minimum viable product that we can sell to customers, right? I mean, it and sounds very Disney. Like that's a Disney approach almost to what Star Wars has become in the past five years. Oh, yeah, a little bit. But but what I mean by that is that like, like this game has combat, right? This game has AI. It has enemies. Uh, they're not interesting or exciting in any fucking way, right? Because the combat is just like you're behind cover. You can pop out of cover. You can shoot your little blaster. And then if you're shooting people, they're just kind of like, hey, pew, pew. And then they're like wobble around a little bit. And then you just run up to them and punch them or something like, yeah, it has combat, but it's not exciting in any way. And and it's like the same with like the stealth, the collection, the environments. Um, it really does feel like uncharted without the polish and by that i mean like the uncharted games are very much like we're going to be cinematic but at the end of the day you're pretty much going through a very linear thing and maybe we'll present a side path through this room but in reality you're just kind of going linear through i mean it is quote unquote open world right like i haven't gotten to the open world segment really but it, does it does it actually kind of open up or is it really just an open space and you have contained missions in different parts of it uh, it is a it is an open world, yeah. It is like like I mean it's not it's the so each planet has an open world s section and all the cities are in the open world. So like you're you're just going over to the city, going over to bases. Going in and out. Uh, you can fast travel across it, but everything's open. It, it's not like Zelda or something where you're climbing. You can climb every single rock face and all that sort yeah. of open world. It's like it's very like Horizon Zero Dawn open world. So like everything's accessible. You can go to everything, but you don't have those traversal things that are getting you inside every nook and cranny uh sort of stuff. Like you you're not climbing on every surface <laughs> like Zelda sort of yeah. thing. Is the story like compelling in any way? Are you drawn to continue the main the main quest line or are you more interested in spending time in the different planets just just um, to walk around? I I'm enjoying the story. I I don't I, I think I'm enjoying the story because it just feels it doesn't feel like anything crazy or amazing. It just feels like I'm kind of watching what I imagine that Star Wars Coruscant show was like. It just feels like just like an average Coruscant TV show. show from the remember George Lucas's Underworld show. He was going to make the original rumors one, yeah. for the Star oh, Wars show. Oh, I th for some reason, I thought you were talking about Andor. I was like, no, no, no. Is that um, I was like, what? <laughs> you're right. Uh, so it just feels like a, a TV, like a schlocky Star Wars TV show. Uh, and I, I'm kind of in that vibe. You also have so much to do. Um, you get to like the first planet, I think Tyroshi or something like that. And you're in the base and you're doing some of your main missions. But then there's all these intel things that lead you around the map. And it doesn't, it's not like exactly telling you what you need to do. But you have to collect multiple of these intels uh or talk mm -hmm. to people to learn more things uh to go do more missions and like i had this whole mission where i'm trying to become a sabak high roller because i've been playing a ton of that card game and it's really fun to play people in that and and it's it's pretty simple card game but it's it's just fun and they have this like really like oh you're getting into these exclusive hidden clubs now to like continue playing this and feeding your mm -hmm. gambling addiction uh, and then uh, there's so there's side missions. There's all sorts of contracts with the different uh, factions. There is a reputation system. Uh, I think it is a very underbaked reputation system. It is very much do A and then or help faction D, C, B, and A. Uh, maybe B cares about it and their, theirs goes down and this faction goes up. The cool thing they have is at least in the two planet cities, major cities I've been to. The factions have different areas so if you're friendly with a faction they just let you in you can walk around do stuff mm -hmm. but if you're against the faction you have to like sneak in and areas so even the factions you're in that are friendly you can like see all the sneaking points and where you need to go so in case they, you become unfriendly with them you're like okay now i know how to kind of get into this area and and do these missions um can you can you just shoot random people like anyone in the cities you can't shoot uh random people so. or anything like that uh my uh, 
it, it, this game this game lo loves to do the thing where it's like in certain areas approaching certain people certain things they're just like nah we're gonna do stylish so we're either gonna strip down your control so now you're just smooth walking and we're gonna <laughs> shift the camera slightly or like smooth. nah we're just gonna we're just gonna transition and take over here and uh this is kind of related to that this game if i'm not mistaken this game defaults to a 21 by 9 yeah. aspect ratio oh yeah i remember so hearing fucking, this it's fucking stupid it's so and, and i only i only noticed it because i was having some problems with hdr so i went into the settings and i immediately saw the option that was like enable 21 by 9 and it's on by default and i was like no no <laughs> it still does that for cutscenes. yeah yeah and it's the same it's, visual ratio too like when you change the option back and forth the screen doesn't get bigger or smaller it just hides the black bars it just gets taller so it's just yeah. like yeah oh but it, it does like, it does ex it does blow up the ui a lot which yeah. is weird it is it's and yeah. it says that in the thing too and i'm like that's a weird thing to say and then you're like whoa that's a ui hello yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I, so I don't I don't mean to, and I don't want people thinking I'm saying this is some masterpiece of a video game. It is a solid fucking seven out of ten. Everything about it I is solid. Is very safe, very oh, fine. It's a will solid seven. Uh, <laughs> it feels like the just cause of Star Wars universe without the like fun of just cause. Sorry, I you said will solid seven. We got to ask Karen how big it actually <laughs> is. <though. laughs> no, I'm talking about shits. Um, <laughs> but I I'm just absolutely I'm really enjoying my time with it. It. it I, I just got into it quickly, uh, played a couple hours. Mm -hmm. it, everything has felt good about it. Nothing has, uh, and again, nothing's amazing, but nothing has been like, oh, fuck you. Like, uh, fuck you, game. Like, nothing has felt bad or done something bad. I, like, Nyx, you can you can have him open doors to you so that by the time you get to the door, it's just open. Uh, it's like a fun little, so if you're, like, sprinting away from an enemy, he can distract things. It's very much like you're always going to distract a guy with Nyx, punch him, uh, or use the yeah. sleep gun. Uh, the leveling up of the gun, the speeder, the uh, ship, I think is terrible and bad. You like <laughs> have to collect all these materials and then you go to the Ugh. person to give the materials and pay for the upgrade. But it's like a weird upgrade tree. It, there's a system with the blaster where you're switching from like killing. Can you and imagine? Can you imagine if you had to do that in real life? You wanted to go buy a pistol, right. and it's like, well, you have to bring me the wood and the metal and the bullets, yeah. and I'll build it for like the ice. It's like I so weird. hate gathering materials in games. Like Thing, genuinely, so it's one of my least favorite things. I have just there is no like material resources in the world you're going to pick up. There's stuff in like loot in places. Uh, Nix can always yeah, fetch it. You're just, just like walking around. past it and clicking right stick. Uh, to grab stuff so i've i've always pretty much unless i specifically want something um i've been fine with that uh but it's just a weird system that i don't like like same with the pistol uh you only have your pistol <laughs> gun uh you can pick up other guns and stuff like that but you don't permanently have them you just drop them when, oh, when you're done with them and, everything. Fuck it. and i i mean i want to have other guns but again that is not a thing so far in the game that has been really like oh fucking come on game like i would love to have a yeah, yeah. assault rifle or sniper with me all the time but i haven't been in a situation where because enemies drop them all the time you're just you send you can send nicks out to go grab it and bring it back to you um all that sort of stuff uh i, I don't remember what else i'm gonna say about this but so far i'm well, enjoying the game what were you gonna say I was just going to say, it's based on what you're saying, uh, Will, I think I'm probably going to end up being more in line with Ian because it this just does not appeal to me. I was actually hearing Ian talk about it made me think of the Jenny Nicholson video where she went on to the Star Wars hotel thing. Yeah. And there's like different storylines. And she's like, I specifically avoided the smuggler storyline because I just don't give a shit about it. That's this game for me. It's like, I just yeah. don't care. Like, I, I have never wanted to be han solo like like in when i was a kid like han solo was cool but like that was not what i was interested in about star wars so this game just does not fulfill any yeah. of that for me but hearing you talk about it will makes me think that this is essentially the star wars version of the avatar game the frontiers of pandora that i've been playing where it's like yeah. not amazing but the world is kind of like really cool to be in and there's a lot of cool tech made by massive same company so like or same developer so uh mm -hmm. i i'm i'm not upset 
that it exists, but I'm not at all excited to play it, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I think for me, like reading through the reviews and my own reaction to it, I feel like this really comes down to this uh, kind of like what you're saying, Will, there's nothing like offensively bad about this game, except, OK, I will say one thing. I, you know, fuck, fuck all the politics and diversity arguments against this game, et cetera. But there is something wrong with the main character's face, like because every other face in the game looks fine, but their face looks like it is modeled incorrectly. Like there are scenes and shots where you look at it and you're like the the mesh is fucked up. Like it almost looks like somebody's had too much plastic surgery and it's like everybody else's face looks great. And then there's just something fucked about the main character's face. I don't know if you've noticed that, Will. I, I honestly think she looks perfectly fine. But if, if you want to, I don't know. If you want to, I think it's the, on that you're, hill. you're talking about. You're talking about like the animation, like not no, like the I'm sculpture. talking about like. No, it's it's <laughs> how ugly it, you're right. Is. It's like <laughs> it's like the sculpture, but you look at it and it's like it's like there's like weird cheekbones in weird places, but in a way that makes me think like like as a QA tester. I would look at this if I, if I was testing this game, I would be like, hey, I think th I think the face modeling is fucked on this character. Like, that's how mm. bad it looks. Anyways, that that's the only thing that, like, jumped out to me is like there's something clearly wrong here. But but getting back to my point, which is reading a lot of these reviews and things and seeing some people say like, hey, this is great. And other people be like, this is fucking terrible. And seeing Greg Miller give it a four out of ten has like cemented in my mind this idea of. This game is is right down the road right down the middle of the road right it's not doing anything special it's not doing anything awful um it is at least doing something different from the usual ubisoft formula but other than that it feels like it is not a unique game in any way and it feels like your reaction to the game is going to be based on are you are you receptive to kind of continuing yeah. the norm of game design or are you are you tired have you played too many of these same games over and over again it's and it's the star field of star wars games yes it's like perfect oh, it's not that bad yeah. it's it's not an improvement <laughs> it's the same that you're used to but that's not fucking good enough no, anymore, see, I, you know i would compare that's exactly it, right i would compare it to that new ratchet and clank like the same way that was received is like some people really no. didn't enjoy it and some people really liked it I but, think, but what I'm saying is that at least was doing new stuff and had good stuff yeah, in it. True. Whereas this, this is not doing anything new. And so it really comes down to, are you tired of that or not? And and for me, I'm like, I don't even play these games that much, but I'm like, I thought there was going to be something special here. I thought it was going to be something new, unique, and it's just fucking not. So I, yeah. I don't know. I'm curious if you could tell me at what point I should cut it off because I... I I just did the mansion mission in Canto Blight. I'm like literally at the ending cutscene for that. I mean, it, you haven't gotten keep to, playing some more. I mean, you got another like two or three hours before you even have a like a working ship and all of the like. You're not even to the open world aspect of this game yet. Okay. So you've you've so got I'll a get bit. To, I'll get to open world. Yeah, uh, I will say I think the blend as far as them not doing anything new, I think putting all these parts together feels very well put together. Like I don't. Uh, again, yeah. not anything new, but it's the same way with a couple other games in the past couple of years where they're not doing anything new, but they're doing a very, very good version of it. Um, yeah. And, and that this uh, actually, you know what I was going to say? This almost feels like the Harry Potter, uh, like Hogwarts Legacy. This is just Hogwarts Legacy, but for the Star Wars people who like smugglers. <laughs> yeah, I can see uh, that. It really feels like that. The world is very lived in. Um, uh, like walking, like I just went to a random space station, entered through the space station. I could go up to the bar, talk to the bartender, go listen in on a conversation to get some intel, find a data pad, go play some sabak for a bit. Like, it, it just mm -hmm. feels like there's options to do things and 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 like kind of sit in the Star Wars world and not be like, oh, I'm with the Jedi's. Oh, I'm with and like it's very Andor in that sense of like. No one so yeah. far has mattered to the Star Wars universe. I've seen a picture of a hut. I don't know if it's Jabba. And I am, I am honestly waiting for the shoe to drop when they have, like, suddenly there's Darth Vader, and I'm fighting Darth oh, Vader for some stupid yeah. reason. Like, I'm waiting for that moment, and I'm, I'm going to be very upset when it happens. But um, I just think, like you said, Ian, it's a very time and place game. Like, this game has to hit you when you uh, want this type of game. Ago. Uh, and want it and and I think it's perfect for me and, and I'm really enjoying it uh, and it's fun yeah I will say 
this game is only $17.99, folks. So if you're <laughs> at all curious, give it a shot. It's not abysmal in any way. It well, may work for you, may not. But but the other thing is, uh, fuck, I'm, I'm thinking about like, hey, maybe it's time for me to finally play uh, Assassin's Creed Syndicate, you know, or any of these. Mm-hmm. Or maybe it's time for me to finally play Avatar. You know, like like that's seventeen ninety nine, folks, man, call me a shill, but that's a great fucking deal because I don't like this game, but I've got a shitload of other games I can play now for the rest of this month. I think the base plan you can pay starting tomorrow and get it right. I I don't think so. I'm not sure about that. When I looked at it, it made it sound like only the seventeen ninety nine plan got access to it. Like now, like around launch, I think the other plan is like you got to wait for it to come to the the cheaper library oh i see um but yeah, yeah. so far uh, I've, i'm on a second planet now um and, and again like at any point i'm like oh i want to go finish this mission back on the other planet fly into space do the the thing back to that but uh yeah it's it's solid for what it is i don't think it's it's gonna make everyone's lists or anyone's i like this game a lot but uh yeah it's it's good it's also it's just uh you know exactly like you said it's good right if this was if this was 2022 when elden ring came out right and there was there was fucking elden ring and then there was pentiment and then there was like nothing else that year basically like yeah this would this would hit a lot harder right but this year has been light for triple a's but holy shit are we swimming in indies like we'll talk about it more when we get to the nindy direct and all that and all that stuff but like there is a huge backlog of fantastic indie games and double A games so far this year. And it's very hard to justify sitting down to play a, a seven out of 10 at best when you've got those sitting there. That's the other thing that's really been eating at me is like, why am I giving this game a shot when it's not working? And there's, there's better games that deserve my attention. Yeah, I, I, I would, I think this will be nine or 10 on my list at the end of the year. Um, probably. Uh, I, that if, high? Uh, if, really? If I were to think, I mean, you gotta play more games man yeah but i don't rate my list by like i, I should say i rate my list I, on enjoyment not on a good game uh yeah so that's probably almost why. like like not being serious here but almost like how many hours of enjoyment did you get out of this and if you're gonna end up finishing yeah. this game it's gonna be a couple dozen hours and you're gonna be like yeah this was this was fun you know yeah some of my right. favorite well, games are terrible ba- based on based on what ian just said i have just paid 19 dollars and 10 cents to join ubisoft plus for the month so that jersey tax i think so <laughs> yeah damn jesus but, christ uh, yeah Come on I'm, down gonna to down, I'm gonna download it yeah i should fucking sales tax oh uh, I, I should it. also say i've been playing on xbox uh ian i assume you're on pc it seems fine no i'm on xbox it oh seems you're on, fine xbox? on xbox my um when I check my frame rates on the TV, it says it's running at 120 uh, variable, and which I don't it's buy definitely that. Definitely not. Like, it's like probably my the X- Xbox signal is 120. That's what I think. The Xbox signal is 120, but it, it it is when I'm doing things in the game, it is adjusting it. So I'm like, yeah. what is it reading here? But uh, it it is. I am playing in performance mode, which is at least 60, 60, uh, and, yeah. and I think everything yeah, looks runs, fine. Runs fine. Runs yeah. great uh okay uh other game i've been playing this week that i finished and i'm not gonna talk about very much is fire emblem the blazing blade by blazing blade um 2003's six fire emblem seven sorry the fire emblem seven, a lot of numbers going around four eight <laughs> uh and we finished it we finished our let's play we had a five hour long stream uh where Jesus. all of our nightmares came true uh jason's nightmare of me locking through things came true my so nightmare of berserks attacking us came true kyle's nightmare of having to be there was true um but we did it we we beat the game it was very fun it was a great series um i had a blast <laughs> with it i still like fire emblem games i will never play one like that ever again in my entire life I was uh, I was gonna say I think you would actually enjoy it more if you played it my style, which is just purely like feeling and very little oh. like like <coughs> management of like like what Jason was doing. Jason is your atypical Fire Emblem player where everything is thought out super well. 
and my play style is like i just want to have fun i know this guy's strong we're gonna see what happens yeah like I, that that's just i throw stuff at the wall but that that is how i rip mm. through sacred stones and path of radiance yeah. like i yep. have no I, I mean other i won't ever lose a character but other than that Same. i am i'm just killing people doing what i want if i die i reset the level and try again yeah. um and i don't think about anything uh, yep. So that was fun, and we finished it, and it's over, and no one, I don't have to schedule with you two anymore, which I'm sad about, <laughs> but it's also so frustrating scheduling fun. with two other people, plus Jason isn't a member of Subpixel, so I like, I can't, like, I can push yeah, Kyle snail around, mail. but I gotta, yeah, I gotta make sure Jason's, Jason's first. Just do uh, whatever. And it worked out. Yeah, he does. He does whatever he wants. Um, so yeah, that's it. Um, Ian, uh, you want to hit your other games you've been playing quickly? Yeah. Um, uh, just a real quick shout out to Armor Reforger. Uh, continuing to play that with uh, Will and friend of the site Zach. Um, Zach from friend of the site, not Zach from Save Data. Mm. Um, and continuing to have a lot of fun with that. It's it's interesting to see. I feel like we've kind of worked our way through the base content. And what I mean by base content is when you buy the game, you get, uh, I don't want to say it's not a bare bones because they fleshed it out, but you get like 80s Soviet faction, 80s US faction, and you get two maps, kind of Eastern European maps. And we played those a lot. We played those weapons a lot. And we're kind of on the cusp of like, okay, it's time to dive into the mods, time to get the Vietnam mod, time to get the modern mod, time to get the World War II mod and play on those maps and things and maybe even dive into some multiplayer so so that being said we're i put it in the discord we're gonna try to do some community sessions so anybody who wants to uh check out armor reforger with us i think it's 30 or 40 bucks honestly it's worth it it's kind of a forever game in a way there's all sorts of stuff to do so we're going to do some community missions where we're basically going to open up the mission we like to do the game master mode which is where one person has kind of built a scenario and they can they can play alongside you but they can also kind of go out to god mode and like add enemies or tweak things and then hop back in so Sounds it'll be fun. fun yeah it'll be fun to have even more people and kind of having the community play together and play with a group larger than just three people you know if we could get like four five six ten and have a squad rolling we can even have more dynamic missions and things like that so shout outs there if you guys are interested check out our discord uh that'll be that link will be at subpixelfilms.com or in the the chat um the other game i've been playing holy shit this came out of nowhere look I'm a little TikTok boy. We all know it. It's it's a great app. And I uh, was on TikTok and I saw some guy playing a game and he was like, I just spent three hours doing the tutorial. And then he like zoomed out and the tutorial was like a little island. And then he saw the rest of the map and he's like, and this is the rest of the game. Oh, my God. And it was a little exaggerated, but it didn't matter because, folks, it was a fucking factory game that he was playing. And I was like, fuck, yes fuck yes and so i looked it up it's called shapes 2 that's shapes with a z 2 um it's on steam it's it's a factory game but it's doing some things differently it's more of a puzzler than it is a factory game but it does still have factory <laughs> elements um and the reason why i say that is basically it is um you're basically taking 2d shapes you're mining them from the world and then you're slicing and dicing them up or combining them back together or painting them or, or stacking them on top of each other to meet the required shape and then throw that into a vortex. And then it'll be like, hey, you have to produce 10,000 of this weird shape in this color. And then it'll unlock new tech and, and give you more stuff. But you're doing like conveyor belts. You're doing little machines. You're doing trains. You're doing different platforms and bridges and tunnels. And it's really cool. Um, the reason why it's not quite a factory game, I would say, is because... All the resources are unlimited um, and building is instant. So it's not like you're running around as an avatar trying to build it. And there's also it's not until later in the game that you get to a build cost. So any conveyor belt or machine or anything doesn't require ingredients or a build cost or anything. So you can just put unlimited of them down. It's only later in the game when you're building like platforms, like big platforms in space that it costs mm. uh, some resource. But it's really cool because it kind of takes down the tension a bit because you're like, I have so much space. I have so many resources like it, I don't have to worry about messing things up because I can very quickly delete it and rebuild in a different way. And it also has a fantastic copy paste function where you're just like you can just it, I know this is this is not going to sound amazing. It sounds like copy paste, but the way that it 
it feels just so good where you can very quickly like drag select copy and then you hit control v and then you can just click somewhere and you instantly repeat it and it's so great because there's a lot of times where i'll set up like i'm like okay i need four full conveyor belts going i'll set up one conveyor belt get those factories going okay it's up and running select copy paste three more times tie in the conveyor belts boom so instead of having to build the whole thing four times i build it once and then copy paste it Mm -hmm. and then i can also select save that as a blueprint so i'll give you an example like um if i need to take four lanes of stuff and i need to take those shapes and split them in half and then have uh and have those go out the other side so i take one shape i split it in half and then i send the two halves out i have a space platform as a blueprint so now all i have to do is just go to my blueprints click that blueprint place it feed the four belts in four belts out and it's already cutting it in half so it's just like fantastic where you're you're unlocking upgrades you're unlocking tech and new machines and things but as you're going you're like oh i keep having to feed four line lanes of items and paint them a color and have them out so let me just build that once save it as a blueprint and now i've used it a hundred times and it just feels fantastic to be like oh i've already done that before i have that here boom paste done cool moving on it's fucking incredible i think i have like 15 hours since like friday on this game like it's very very good if you're into factory games if, if you're even into like um zachtronics games where he'll do he'll do stuff like that where it's like you know here's a little puzzle and you gotta like do a shape and manipulate it and send it out it's just like that shapes too uh, fantastic it's it's going on the goatee list it's really really good it's technically an early access but it's the type of early access where there's like there's like 10 fucking tech tiers i'm only about halfway through in 15 hours it doesn't feel like you're missing anything with early access it's all there it's all working it just feels like they're going to add end game stuff on top of it so it doesn't really feel like early access at all it's fantastic definitely if you guys are into factory games check it out shapes too i am with every fiber of my being not <clears throat> buying this video game i really want to I, finish factorio i know i watched Vinny play a bit of it and i i remember shapes one and i i think i wanted to get that at, at some sale um and then i think they someone was like oh shapes two is coming out soon or next year or something and i was like okay i won't get into a new like factorio type um so uh i'm very excited that it, it feels good it sounds like all the issues I have with Factorio, uh, it is resolving. And not that those are issues with Factorio, but it's just like things that are in Factorio that are not in this, which is like the copy paste. I guess when you have drones in Factorio, it's a bit more like that, but uh, just being but, able to But do even stuff then, like that. you place down the blueprint, you have to have the ingredients, you have to wait for the drones. Yeah. This is just like, no, nah, this isn't really about resource management. This is just about, can you figure out how to deliver this item I want to say at scale, but scale only in like you need to deliver 30,000 of them. So you need to be able to scale up to do it. It's not a problem of resources. It's a problem of being able to like deliver it Mm -hmm. efficiently in a way. Okay. Okay. I'll check it out. I mean, I won't check it out. I won't check it out. I'm refusing to check it out. You haven't finished Factorio yet, you piece of shit? I haven't finished. Well, no, because I, I kind of took a break from playing games because I was... I was in a bad oh, place. Oh, you're, t- you're too busy with your soft seven over there. No, and then I played Fucking Star Wars I, Outlaws. Jesus. I, listen, I, it's the mood I'm in. I'm not. I really wanted to play RimWorld, and I'm like, I'm not going to sit here Fucking and play Factoria when I want to play RimWorld. And I was like, okay. So I was playing a lot of Doom on because that new Doom ugh. remaster came out on Xbox. Doom one and two. What do you mean? Ugh, it's fantastic. Look, it, this it's here's the problem. I didn't bring it up at the time. But if I'm not mistaken, you said you started Factorio before you went on vacation. Is that right? Yeah. You fucked up, buddy. Look, let me tell you why. But it was like like a a month before. A Factorio playthrough is is a fever haze. It is a cocaine fueled binge. It is a I'm going to put 80 fucking hours into this game over the next 10 days until it's done. You cannot interrupt it in any way whatsoever. The the problem is I was also making trying to make money at the time, which is when that huge ad thing I was was trying to edit. And I was like, (laughs) fuck, all I want to do is play Factorio. Um, Yeah, I know. I need to get back into the fever state. I will. I promise. But probably after Star Wars Outlaws, because I'm Again, I measure things on fun, and I'm having fun with a video game, and I'm going to continue to have fun with the video game until I don't have fun. Uh, so I will be doing that. Um, speaking of fun, Kyle, is Deadlock fun? 
I I don't know. Damn I it. haven't played it with you guys, so I've only played the tr the training uh, elements that it it took like thirty minutes to do all of the training missions and get used to like laning and the different uh, power ups and stuff that you can do. It seems fun. Like mm. from the outside, it definitely seems like it's a fun game. Someone was trying to compare it to Overwatch, and I, other than the hero shooter aspect, I don't think it's very much like Overwatch at all. Um, you mean Concord? But, yeah, sorry, I misspoke. <laughs> I meant Concord. Yeah. Um, very successful Sony video game, Concord. Um, I liked what I experienced in the training stuff, and it is still very much in that sort of alpha phase, but. I think Valve might have something of a winner on their hands, potentially. Nice. Like it, it's genuinely seems like fun and it's different enough and long enough. Like the, the game modes are long. These are not like five minute matches. They're like 20 yeah. to 30 minute matches. Um, I think going for that more integrated sort of player base that that really wants to sink its teeth into something really kind of wide spanning as far as what you can do with the different characters like each character does feel unique which is exactly what you want a hero shooter to feel like but it doesn't feel s similar compared to overwatch in a way other than maybe some of the visual elements it plays so differently and i think that the fan base that maybe was put off by what blizzard did with overwatch 2 might be willing to pick this up and be like hey this is this is pretty good in a little bit of a different way I liked it, but I, I sent you guys some invites. Did you get them? Did I you, did. did you receive I them? Accepted. Uh, yes. I accepted. I'm pretty sure needed. I installed it. I think we should play at some point because yeah. I, again, haven't played a single match and I wanted to wait and do it with you guys. So let me know when we can uh, go stream it or something. It'd be fun. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited because I I've always had a bit of a flirtatious attitude towards MOBAs. Uh, I mm. played I played Dota 2 a tiny amount, maybe like three or four matches but as soon as i realized what last hit was and then i kind of ran up against it are you guys familiar with the term last hit no like the person to get the last hit gets the kill yeah it's fucking bullshit so it's something from dota 1 that they've just kind of carried into a lot of these dota games like dota 2 and lol etc which is basically um it's all about leveling up your character right so you want to get xp and or gold to level up your character and buy items at the shop but if 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 I'm fighting somebody and I deal 95 percent of the damage and then Kyle comes in and does the last five percent, even if we're on the same fucking team, he gets all the gold. He gets all the XP for it. Right. You don't and get like an assist or anything. I don't get no. shit. Crazy. What? Yeah, it's bullshit. And like I knew about that um, and I was and I like I knew about it and I'm like and I'm playing Dota and I'm like trying to be careful about it. But there was this one moment where I'm like running across the map and I see my teammate and he's trying to kill this enemy and he's at like 10% and the enemy AI is at like 10%. I'm like, oh, let me help you out real quick. And I, I throw a spell or whatever and it hits the guy and he like fucking goes off on me in chat and he's like, how fucking dare you steal while I said it? And I was just like, I know technically I'm in the wrong, but how could you fucking design your game to like discourage teamwork like that? Like it's yeah. fucked. But imagine he and, died and then screamed at you for not helping yeah. him. Like that's the exactly, opposite yeah. scenario. <laughs> so so to me, like that is like a clear cut fucking example of bad game design in the original that all these MOBAs are like, oh, we've got to be like the original and we've got to carry it through. And I think that's kind of the problem is you have these games that for MOBAs within themselves have become so insular because you have to know the meta and the meta and the meta and there's a shitload of items in the shop and all these characters and stuff. And you're just fucking useless if you don't know that on top of all these like piss poor game decisions, game game design decisions that have become the standard for the genre. And that's mm. always pushed me away. I, I do think I played Heroes of the Storm for a week or two, the Blizzard one. That one was good. I like that one because it didn't have last hit. Like you had shared XP across the whole team. So the whole team leveled up together and it was like, great, that makes fucking sense to me, right? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. like the team is gathering into a common XP pool and we all level up at the same time. And it was like fucking cool, right? Um, so to see, and I'm not really, I'm more of a fan of FPS than I am of top down action games. I don't have anything against them. And I've always been wanting to try an FPS MOBA. I even tried Battleborn, which sucked, but I tried it. <laughs> um, I forgot about so to that hear, game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So to hear Valve come in and they have a very good understanding of MOBAs and shooters, and they're doing something completely different here. 
and mashing the two up and making some drastic changes. I'm I'm excited to give this a shot. I I really am. Yeah. Yeah. I um, I think you guys will be very I think you'll you'll both find different things to really like about it. Uh, I do recommend doing at least a bit of the training just to sort yeah. of familiarize yourself. But it's pretty simple once you get the hang of it. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to play it with you guys. So looking forward to it. Let's do it. Uh, and then next to our, well, I'll just do the Mirror's Edge one first. I replay Mirror's Edge pretty much Ooh. once a year just to familiar, f familiarize myself with it again. I think I beat it in about an hour and 50 minutes. So wow. I'm, I'm yeah. trying to get it down to like to like 90 if I can. Uh, I need to look at some like exploit stuff and, and quick route uh, quickest routes through the different levels. But I'm getting pretty good at it. So I think it might be a uh, late night Kyle extra life thing because i did portal 2 i did portal 2 the other year that we did it and i think mirror's edge might be a good start yeah. to finish game i can do did um, ever, and then um, did i ever tell you about the time that i played the first 10 minutes of mirror's edge over and over again for an hour straight uh be, is it because the prologue is like the best map in the entire game no it is really good <laughs> it's it was my first time playing mirror's edge um, I had it installed on my laptop in college and uh. there is a jump about 10 minutes in that I kept missing the jump. Like I just couldn't get to the ledge. Like I was kept being short and I'm like, what the yeah. fuck is happening? <laughs> and I finally look it up and I was playing a pirated copy and in the game, they have a way to detect if you're playing a pirated copy and their solution to that is to make you miss that jump. Like that's 10 minutes so that's, funny. Yeah, that's and, and absolutely hilarious. That's fucking wild. And so I had to find the crack for that anti-piracy to then apply there, on top of it. Yeah, I love that. There, there, there are two jumps in that game, if you buy it legally, um, where you have to jump from like a pipe to another pipe. And it's this it's the same scenario in two different levels. And I have played Mirror's Edge probably like 60 to 70 times all the way through, and I have never gotten, I always fall to my death. And it's just purely, you have to be positioned Wild. exactly right, and I don't know why I can't continue to get it, but it's like it changes every time you play it. It's like, nah, we're not doing it this time. Like, like the thing you thought yeah. worked is gonna, you know, I'm so fucking annoyed. I bet but, if you showed um, me what pipes, yeah. I would know exactly what you're talking about. Because I there are it's, those moments that you get so good at that game, and then there's just like one or two humbling moments, and you're just like, fuck you. Like, what are you talking so in, about? <laughs> it's in the level, it's in the level jackknife where you go into the sewers and then you go you end up on the, mm -hmm. the top on of that the, stupid grand. Yes. So you're chasing jackknife towards it's the last like three minutes of the of the level you you find the guy you're looking for he starts running you're parkouring it's really cool there's like helicopters flying over and it's great really really puts you like where the game wants you to be visually and uh with the music and everything it's great jackknife jumps over a building and it goes into a cinematic and he tries to flip like hold on to a pole and flip forward and he the pole like moves he falls and like bangs his head and you're like okay now i have time to catch up to him and as soon as you jump like you have to He's on this building. You're over here. You have to go like around to get it. And as soon as you go around, that's where those fucking pipes are. And it's like, it's so annoying. I can't, I, I dread doing that level because I know if I try to do a speed test, I will fail at that point. <laughs> it's, it's annoying. Um, anyway, the other, the other game that I played was the Black Myth Wukong, Wukong benchmark tool. And the only reason I did it was because I wanted to test out how well my PC would hold up to the game if I decided to buy it. I don't think I'm going to buy it because my PC cannot run this super well. It I can get like 40 to 50 FPS at 1440p with pretty decent settings, no no RT settings on at all. And mm -hmm. uh I don't know. It's just one of those things where it's like I'd rather almost buy a console and play it on console where at least I can guarantee like a solid 60 FPS with shitty looking graphics compared to my PC. Um but have either of you played Black Myth Wukong or, or or been interested in playing it at all? No, as soon as I heard it's like a boss rush, I'm like, fuck. That's off. Yeah, I, yeah, I was I was somewhat interested in playing it before I tried the benchmark tool. And then I tried the benchmark tool and I was like, mm, not really. And then I just keep hearing that it's like. Just it's not Dark Souls, it's not Elden Ring, it's not yeah. like a yeah, yeah. I, I've it's heard it's closer to, to God of War, God of War action and controls and everything. 
Yeah. I, I, I yeah. would like to check it out. I just feel like... Um, uh, uh, you hate Jesus Chinese Christ. people? I, I, you know, I, I was trying to think of a funny joke, and then I was abandoning That's it. That's what he was saying to the fire. <laughs> I hate streams. Chinese people. <laughs> but there's something about... Um, that design of games from China, like same with the Wild Hearts, which is like the mo uh, the Monster Hunter, like there's yeah, that yeah. open world game design to those games that uh, that just doesn't click with me. There was one other game that came out last year or two years this ago. One, this one's not. I mean, it's kind of arguable if it is open world because what it sounds like is basically you're just traveling between arenas to fight bosses and you may find yeah. a side boss somewhere else, but that's yeah. kind of it. No, sorry. I, I haven't played black Myth Wukong at all. I, I'm just, because I'm of, just, uh, yes. I'm just assigning stereotypes to it, uh, because that's yeah, what I'm allowed okay. to do I with proof. video games. Um, so it's I just show. like, it turned yeah. me off from there. I also like, um, I'm not like that sort of, uh, myth in history stuff. Isn't, in my wheelhouse or something i like i'm yeah. sure if i got into it i'd be really into it but it's the same like with egyptian stuff i'm not that into egyptian stuff so when like something's wow. based in egypt and everyone's like over freaking the, out over the map i, wow. I was gonna yeah. say we're hitting yeah. all the major so, wow. cultures here you just yeah Prince of I mean, egypt come on now <laughs> yeah well anything in africa um so I, I just origins yeah <laughs> exactly actually i like that game uh there's always <laughs> an exception to the hate rule <laughs> there's um, always one there's one of the good ones right yeah i like Jeez. like kingdom uh Kingdom Come Deliverance, like, just give me my Eastern European. You know, no. but I, I want to try it I do out because it does. I, I've heard good things from people I trust. Tom, who used to work with that GameSpot, has said good things about it, and I know he likes that type of game. So that made me be like, oh, maybe there is something to this. And this is where I'd be like, I would pick this up on try this out on Game Pass, or if it was on the sure. Ubisoft thing or something like that, I would pick this up yeah. for like ten dollars and, and try it out because I can see myself say... in like ten years loving it. Just uh, just a reminder, because I just reminded myself, uh, if if you're at all curious or want to try Journey to the West lore, which is what uh, this game is based off of, like kind of big, famous uh, Chinese legend, uh, there is a 2013 movie called Journey to the West Conquering the Demons, which is by directed by Stephen Chow, who did Kung Fu Hustle and Shaolin Soccer. And the clips I've seen of it are very funny. So I would I need to watch that. Uh, apparently that's that's a very 94 good way to get a on Rotten to Tomatoes. West. Wow. It's I remember watching a couple minutes of it and it was very funny. It was just like Kung Fu Hustle and Shaolin Soccer. Mm. Oh, not Kung Fu. I'm thinking I'm trying to think of the movie Karen and I watched, which is the really bad Kung Fu movie. Kung Pao into the fist. Yeah. Kung Pao. Yeah. We watched that movie. It's so bad and so horrible and very I racist need to watch it. I've never watched it. It is so fucking funny, though. It is <laughs> it is a masterpiece of terrible cinema. I it can is, believe that. It is yeah. It is very. He fights a baby. It's very good. Uh, or a wow. baby fights people. Uh, but but yeah, yeah I, so. I, I I so I might try this benchmark benchmark tool out too because it sounds. I've been looking for like a the, good benchmark bench benchmark tool. Benchmark. I want to try it out. Yeah. Benchmark. Well, it, the annoying thing is, is it does make you restart if you do if you change any of the uh, ray tracing settings. I think you have to restart it because mm. I I had, like turned on ray tracing on full and I was like, how am I getting like sixty FPS? And then I restarted it and it immediately dropped down to like twenty. Mm -hmm. um, so just be aware of that. And sometimes it doesn't prompt you. Sometimes it it just straight up won't tell you that you need to reset uh, restart it. But uh, yeah, so I mean, I'm interested in playing Black Myth Wukong in theory. But I just I'm not super drawn to it right now. And I think the the sort of sky high reception that it had right when it launched has been a little bit tempered by the the more recent reviews that have come out from people who are like, actually, this is not really as good as a lot of people are saying that it yeah. is. Um, and also, you know, uh, we all know how racist Will is against Chinese people. So it's it just, true. And, and, and apparently furries. You just don't want to play it because it's a furry game. I so. I mean I do mm. openly hate furries. Hate I'm furries. still on the fence about Chinese. Uh, so I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> very much future people. I'm very much just kidding. <laughs> we have our own furry channel in Discord. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah, I like furries. <laughs> Clip it, Halucha. Uh No, I don't. Um, cool. Uh, I'm happy for you. Uh, I'm happy for everyone. Happiness yeah. all around. 
Great job, team. News time? News time. News time. Let's play that theme song. Boop, 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 boop. Why did we get rid of the, the, the news theme song? Because we don't sad. have a new when one. I was, it was when just I was me streaming whispering, with the, here's with, the news. With save data, Zach was like, you know, I really miss it. Like, I, he wants, he wants it to come back. If he wants to make me a new news theme, but we changed the entire theming, so I, I need a new theme Can song. Can we just, do they, do they have theme songs for any of their shows? We should just steal one of just them. Just steal it. Who? Yeah. Save data? Yeah. They have their um, Pokemon rap they do for patrons. Oh, we should just steal that as the news theme. <laughs> <laughs> Which I don't, I, it's, and you know what? No comment. Ian. Well, okay, we, we should we should make our own version, but all the patrons are famous dictators in history. Wait, <laughs> Sibylla, like, Sibylla like, said they have the P song. They have a the song P about P. Song. Didn't Carl write oh. a song about? I thought it was about cum. Steal the Patreon know. rap. Yeah, that's Patreon that's rap. the, that's that's what the what Pokemon rap. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. All right. Anyways, uh, gentlemen, this week we had a double whammy, a two for one, a Nintendo Indie World and Partner Direct. Uh, did you, uh, either of you guys happen to see this? I did not. I caught the tail end of it uh, from from uh, I don't even know the name of the game. So continue talk. Sorry, I shouldn't talk. It's it's okay. I I happened to catch this because it was it was kind of a nice to just put this on in the background while I was working and and see some stuff come through right off the bat. Big fucking banger, folks. We've got some Bellatro DLC. It's called Friends of jimbo free update and it is a dave the diver witcher among us and vampire the survivors all coming with their own uh cards jokers very own art etc released for free today that being the day of the direct on the 27th of august uh what a fucking banger guys i can't believe i'm gonna be playing some more bellatro you guys excited about this i still have not played bellatro so oh if you start now you could probably finish <laughs> your addiction right around is it, game of the is year. it is it available on uh like mobile like not phones? yet not okay. yet that's that's really where i want to play it so yeah i could see that mm. like it is on switch so oh, switch would okay. also be good yeah uh we've also got civilization 7 will come at launch on the switch i will uh so so civ 5 and civ 6 <laughs> Civ 5 and Civ 6 uh, were on the Nintendo Switch eventually, but I don't believe at launch. Um, this could be interesting. You know, I could totally see if if this is the full package, which is what it looks like. And if it runs and controls fine. How do you guys feel about portable Civ? Feels perfect, right? I can't play PC games with a controller. I've tried. I can't. But you, you play can Dwarf plug, Fortress you on the in. Steam Deck. Yeah. I play Dwarf Fortress on the Steam Deck with a mouse. That is like Steam Deck has like oh, the, the touchpad. Yeah, yeah. Can't touchpad you can't you do worse. can't you do Bluetooth uh, keyboard and mouse? Uh, also on, that, uh, but I also didn't play that much Dwarf Fortress. It was because I was on vacation when Dwarf Fortress came out, and I had a Steam mm. Deck. Ex excuses. Uh, anyways, um, so that's pretty cool. We also got another digital eclipse collection called tetris forever which is going to have multiple tetris games the early tetris games uh including uh some that i've never heard of you guys tetris fans will you ever play tetris i you know funny you bring that up i've never played tetris so i'm really looking that's, forward to this fuck. that's an extra life goal isn't it will plays tetris for the first time Finally. Just put it on the list i like tetris i haven't played it in a while but i you know i, I had a phase yeah, they also have um, some of the weird Tetris, like Bombless, Tetris uh, Battle Bombless. Garden, Bombless? and uh, some others as well. Like, there's a brand new Tetris game called Tetris Time Warp. They've got some multiplayer in here. Uh, Digital Eclipse has kind of been doing these collections lately where they're like really polished ports of the old games. You got a little documentary with it or multiple documentaries, and then you got kind of a new variant on top. So this this uh, this could be pretty cool if you're a Tetris fan. Peglin. You guys heard of Peglin? Every night. <laughs> uh, Peglin is basically Peggle. You guys heard of Peggle? Peggle too! Yes. Peggle. Peggle's fun. Peggle's great. Uh, and what if you just turn Peggle into a roguelike RPG? I'm okay and with that. Okay. I'm, 
I'm I'm fucking in. This was a shadow drop. I, it, not a full shadow drop. It had already been released, uh, announced previously. But this is out on Switch on the 27th of August, the day of the direct. And I screamed. This this is what I was talking about earlier. How the fuck am I supposed to like sit down and spend hours on Star Wars Outlaws, a soft seven, when I've got things like Peglin waiting for me, right? Like this R10. looks so fucking cool. RPG Peggle. This looks awesome. Uh, yeah, we've but also if, got. Yeah, never mind. Hmm? Go ahead. No, no, yeah, I'm not was, arguing uh, with you. Was not it arguing racist, with you. sexist, or just a bad joke? <laughs> no, Which I was one just was all three. I was just gonna say. Uh, no, I'm not. It was, if if every game was Peglin and you finally got a Star Wars Outlaws, you'd be saying you'd play the Solid Seven or the the Limp Seven, you know. So it's all perspective. Soft seven. And, Soft okay, seven. I I kind of see what you're saying. Yeah, and and that's my point. It is perspective. Um, SpongeBob, the Patrick Star game. Did you guys see see the trailer for this? Mm -mm. I did not. You guys, SpongeBob. You guys, SpongeBob fans. When like I was the a child. first three seasons, yeah. Um, I I was never a big SpongeBob fan. I probably only seen a couple episodes, but I saw the movie and it's funny. But the reason why I think this is noteworthy is this kind of feels like Goat Simulator. It feels like they made a SpongeBob Goat Simulator game. Like you're basically just Patrick. You're going around the world doing all sorts of weird, crazy things. You come across people who need stuff. You come across weird mini games. You're just like kicking people's tables over and throwing weird things around and almost like a Simpsons hit and run type of thing as well. This could be fun. I could see this being a lot of fun. Cause will you, you're big fans of goat simulator, right? Yes. I, we're, we're this household. This is a, this is a goat simulator household. Yes. Uh, we've talked be before about how I hold that against you, right? Uh, why do you hold that against me? Cause goat simulator three is very good. It was either an extra life or a stream idea where we said, hey, where I said, hey, we should play Goat Simulator. That's supposed to be fun. And you were like, no, I don't want to play Goat Simulator. And then years later, I find out that you and Karen have been playing well, and obsessing okay. over it. How let, fucking dare let me, you? Well, f first of all, fuck you. Second of all, <laughs> I did not like Goat Simulator 1 because it was very bad poorly performing racist. and it was it was yeah racist it was also like a very joke game not well put together uh -huh. on purpose and i really didn't like the feel okay. of ghost similar so three is where they got me back on board and i downloaded it because every like month or two we do like what's all the co-op games on game pass um yeah so yeah it goes simulator three is up there with the uh the non-gang beast puzzle game uh, that we go back to every so often because they release a new level. Mm. Got it. Human Got fall it. flat. Okay. The, uh, I, um, the, the only SpongeBob, you. the only SpongeBob adjacent video game that I've played to answer your uh, question again with how much of a fan I am of SpongeBob was what I just posted in the streams chat. Um, we, I had that. My my mom oh, got that for me. I think on Christmas. His nose is a joystick. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, it's a, it's one of those plug-in and the and the, the it's teeth just the got buttons. a bunch of mini games. Uh, oh, that's uh, incredible. I don't know if the teeth were the video games. I think it might have just all been the the nose stick. But uh, yeah, we had we had one Wild. of those. Wild. That Hell looks yeah. Do you still have it? No, I think we sold it. Oh, I should check Damn. eBay. That's an extra. Life. It is available on Insta on uh, uh, not Instagram. Uh, Instacart. Instacart. Amazon. Amazon. Okay. It okay. Maybe on Instacart. Uh, speaking of things you had as a child, Will, how about this Castlevania Dominus collection? You excited for this? I'm very excited. So I saw Halucha post that the best Castlevania games are coming to uh, the Switch now, and I incorrectly assumed they meant the like Aria of Sorrow and everything, which is the Game Boy ones. And I was like, I'm surprised that it wasn't already on the Switch. Now that I've seen this, I understand this is the DS Castlevania games coming to the switch yes. and i i have never played any of those um and i know a lot of them are hidden gems same way with the game boy ones so i'm uh i'm excited to get to them in the next 70 years of my life when i buy it day one yep and this was this this was another surprise reveal and release on same day as the direct um those are kind of my personal highlights of the direct i know you guys didn't see it but um these indie worlds partner directs can be hit or miss but this felt like a banger it felt like they had some good shit in here and a lot of it was like guess what today boom you've got it uh really cool stuff there we've also got um a tease slash a, basically a straight out 
fucking announcement. Okay, you ready for this? Um, okay, all right. This is a <laughs> quote. It's, it's fucking buried in this article. This is a quote with Konami producer Noriaki Okamura, who uh, is producing volumes one and two of the Metal Gear Solid collection. This is from IGN, quote, asked directly about bringing Metal Gear Solid 4 to modern consoles. Okamura replied, quote, we are definitely are aware of the situation with Metal Gear Solid 4. Unfortunately, we can't really say too much at the moment with volume one containing Metal Gear Solid 1 through 3. Dot, 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 dot. You can probably connect the dots. Exclamation point. Dot, dot, dot. Three dots. Did he did he say dot, dot, dot? That'd be really that's funny. what this quote is. So I think it's a text quote. Yeah. Of <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Yeah. So that's I, S this is, for Snake. Because, Will, correct me if I'm wrong, but Metal Gear Solid 4 is only available on PS3, right? Uh, yes. Only on the PS3. Uh, it, uh, wh whether... Oh, God. Sorry. I'm getting Slack messages. Are you getting slacked? I know. I, I, I exited Slack. How dare you? Um... Game spots like come back. Yes, on PS PS3. <laughs> come back <laughs> and in that. <laughs> front. And then, in that collection. <laughs> but uh, sorry. sorry, so it it is only available sure it's on the only PS3 on the right now. PlayStation 3. I'm gonna Google it. Yeah, so that's why this is exciting because it's PS3. It's, a lot of people love Metal Gear Solid 4, but it's hard to play it now because it's only on PS3. Who, so um, who loves Metal Gear exciting. Solid 4? I, I people like it. I, I've heard people say that they weren't not that they didn't like one, two and three, but there were people who were like four is the one that got me into the series. Yeah, mm. four is good. It's just compared to the other one. Weird. It, it, it's it's the one with I think it's it has I think it's three hours in a row of cutscenes or at least two hours of cutscenes in a beautiful. row. Um, There's yeah, part of me it that's is like, only on man, the PlayStation three as well. There's there's part of me that's like. I know we hate Let's Plays, but what if we did a full Metal Gear Solid? I, I, I still have never played a single game other than the first hour of Phantom Pain. I've never played yeah. any oh, Phantom Metal Pain. Gear Solid game. Oh. So I played a little bit of some of them. They're pretty good. They okay. hold up. I, I I shouldn't. I should also say, Metal, uh, uh, Guns of the Patriots is a fantastic video game. It's just of the Metal Gear games, it is usually not the highest up, but it is a well playing modern. It's probably the easiest of all the Metal Gear games. Yeah, I could see that. According to Sibylla, apparently Save Data is doing a playthrough, which I now kind of remember. They're doing the bear. He's uh, David plays a bear. And I hope. what? Why didn't they just have me on? No, it's like a VTuber bear, and then they play through Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> oh fuck, and... that's right. Also, Giant Bomb did it forever ago. Yeah, they did Metal Gear Scanlan. Yeah. Also, we talked about this on the Discord, but. We don't we don't like to do let's plays because at least for me <laughs> they're one of those things where the community's like do a let's play and you're like yeah let's plays are easy right cuz you don't have to like do new content each stream you just play the game right and then you're fucking 4 hours into a 5 hour stream and or you're like on episode 20 and you're not halfway through the game and you're just like why the fuck am i doing a let's play so it's it's like a constant push pull yeah. of doing a let's, let's play series I, let's plays are good if you have an audience yes if you have like yeah, or a bit constant influx that. of yeah i think if you I have a know, bit I mean, I, is the best thing to have so like if it's a short if it's a game with like crowd control or like every time like you have rules about you playing and, and oh, it's a game you know. know so like i like a kyle mirrors yeah, edge let's play whether it has crowd control or he he has punishments every time he falls he has to break a leg um or, or like something like that you know that's a fun and it's also a short game i think picking yeah, long yeah, games is, yeah, is the short, problem short game is a mistake yes yes, yes. Because yes. even, even back to New Fire Vegas, <laughs> yeah, even back to New Vegas, I have I I think there's only been one stream so far out of like 20 episodes where I have not had any chatters. So I always have at least mm. one to two active chatters in Back to New Vegas, which is fantastic. It's great, but that that does not save that. I don't. So I think I think it's more about length, length, like you're saying. You got to have a game where you're not not with. It's hard for you to like keep going into the game. Yeah. Like I'm fucking so like 28 hours or something. Fallout New Vegas, New Vegas is a game I have 80 hours in over eight months 
of like yes. evenings being uh high on the couch playing fallout new vegas like that is the way to play yeah. those types of games not sorry they just reminded audience. me of what i said to you in new york city <laughs> <laughs> are you getting high are you getting high <laughs> tim minchin was great in new york city kyle and i yes. on monday yeah, yeah. Uh, with with uh Karen. are you in saw tim minchin? i saw him in dc like 10 years ago with my dad that's crazy yeah he was oh, great nice. it was his last show and he, he... kept bringing up the 10 years oh. ago one did yeah. he do um or last did he do the hollow did he do the hallelujah bit yeah mm -hmm. that's fucking great that it was, was a great moment. it was good it was, yeah, it was very good. incredible um yeah. yeah he was really great anyways uh, sorry uh, not to detract uh, yeah shut the fuck up okay we got more news to go through okay i know we're running a little long i'm gonna we're 10 I'm gonna... minutes over and we've got a shit ton of news to get through so get so we on got board, four Will. news stories this first one this next one we can hit real quick guys guess what turns out bungie's full of shitty people uh, including people who have been fired for uh, sexual misconduct after internal investigations. Uh, this is reporting from Bloomberg via Jason Schreier. The Bloomberg website is loading very slowly, so I cannot tell you this man's name, but I believe he was the creative director Chris of Marathon. Barrett. And he, Yeah, that sounds right. And he was let go a couple months ago. No details provided. Jason Schreier did some digging and got confirmation that it was due to uh, some sexually inappropriate actions and communications he had with other members of Bungie and was fired after an internal investigation. Um, Bungie's, Bungie's just in a real fucking bad state, right? Just yeah. going going back to what you said, what you predicted, you're not sure if they're going to be around much longer. <laughs> uh, I I know. We sh I got to put that on my calendar because I, I may have given Pick them too date. much time. <laughs> Pick a date, yeah. Yeah, because I, I think I said I think I said within five years, and that was like yeah, last year that screen. I said that. Yeah. Said five years. Yeah, I, I wish uh, this told me when I added this to the OBS overlay. I'm sure I could go track it down, but oh, it's oh, it's on the yeah. That's yeah. Let uh, me yep. see it. <laughs> it's fucking I'll yeah. Back up. I'll find it. I, I have a folder on Ian. local chat called Ian's Promises. <laughs> that's the only <laughs> one in there. Really? We should, oh, we should start adding more. Before. We should. <laughs> Um, uh, we got, I got some two crazy fucking stories here, folks. Can I take you on a bit of an adventure? Always. Um, so first up, we have two scientific articles. Well, well, let's say two, two published articles. Um, one is from Remspace, which is a U.S. neurotechnology company who basically did an experiment in which they had people who were actively lucid dreaming move their muscles in response to external stimulus to play a virtual car driving game while they were sleeping. What? Yeah. So let me explain. Basically what happened was they, they trained themselves while they, these were people who were either trained on lucid dreaming or they were already comfortable with lucid dreaming lucid dreaming is while you're dreaming you know you're dreaming so you're able to kind of take control and do things but not wake up um they they train themselves on lucid dreaming they also train themselves to play this game and the game was basically you have uh you twitch your i think it's your right your right arm you twitch to move the car right you twitch your left arm to move the car left or you like twitch both of your legs to like press the gas pedal and go straight um and they trained themselves to play this game in real life using muscle twitches. And then they also trained themselves while they were awake to close their eyes. And uh, essentially, they would have lights flashed on their eyes to tell them if there was an obstacle left, right. So if like there's a light flash on your left eye, then you're supposed to turn right to avoid the obstacle, etc. So they learned they taught themselves this behavior while they were awake. Then they went to sleep. They achieved REM. Uh, according to uh, brain wave readings, etc., and then they applied the light stimuluses to them, tied up to the game to tell them if there's an obstacle left or right. And mm -hmm. while they were lucid dreaming, they were able to do the muscle twitches in game, according to the responses from the external light, to to drive this virtual car. It wasn't a hundred percent success rate, but they said that uh, I don't think they had a percentage, but they said it, like they were frequently able to do it. I'm like this That's is wild literally playing a video game while you are sleeping 
This is actually Wild. what Tesla uses for their autopilot. It's just people sleeping. <laughs> There's pre in the sleeping. trunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Red ball. I mean, red light. Red light. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. It's, it's fucking wild. Um, I don't know how this goes into into actual use or tech or anything, but it, it is a weird instance of you are controlling an external action or system while you are sleeping using lucid dreaming. I got uh, really well. into trying to do lucid dreaming in college and mm -hmm. I was successful twice. And the first oh. time was accidental. And it, I realized I was sleeping because my parents were yelling at me. And I was like, wait a minute, I'm in college. They're in New Jersey. This can't be real. And yeah. then I literally like waved them away and they disappeared. And then I woke up and I was pissed off. And I don't Damn. remember what yeah. the second time was. But what about what about yeah. you got any lucid dreaming experience? Well, no, I've 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 yeah, I'm I'm an idiot in my dreams. I also don't dream very often. So, uh, yeah. Really? Mm. It's not the sign of like a psychopath or something. Uh, anyways, uh, no, I, I, I kind I of did the same thing in college. I, in. <laughs> <laughs> flesh dreams. In, uh, <laughs> I kind of did the same thing in college. I got into lucid dreaming and I, I, I don't want to say I got really good at it, but I've probably done it like 30 or 40 times. But I, I actually found this way where like full blown lucid dreaming feels like you're fully conscious and you're like, I am fully dreaming and I can control anything. And that's cool but I would always get too excited. And so I would be like, Oh, I'm lucid. I'm lucid dreaming. Let me do this. Let me do that. Oh, oh. And then I would wake myself up because I'm too excited that I'm finally lucid dreaming. Mm. Um, but I started doing this thing and this is, this happened to me like a couple dozen times, which is where it's like, it's like a semi-conscious. Like, let me, let me just kind of explain what it is. Like, I remember the, the first time it happened to me, I was having a dream. I'm not in control. For some reason, I was like running through a city and then I stopped. And in my head, I was like, I'm thirsty. I'd like some chocolate milk. And then I looked down and there was chocolate milk in my hand. I'm like, yep, just like I wanted. <laughs> like, it's this weird, it's this weird <laughs> semi-conscious where you, you don't, you're not fully aware that you're dreaming, but you become able to control everything around you and do whatever you do. And, um, I remember I had another dream like that where I was like, I was like on a train and I was like, I want this train to go to Europe. And the train took me to Europe and I got off the train and I was like, I want to fly around. And I just got up in the air and I just <laughs> flew around Europe and it was small, like a Minecraft map. So I was like, there's Paris. But it was like, but it wasn't like a full bore. Yeah, like, like this lucid. is how Hitler felt. <laughs> yeah. So it's it, like that's that was kind of the weird thing was like a semi lucid dreaming. And that way I would maintain control, but not get so excited that I would wake myself up and like not know what to do. Um, yeah, I, I have always <laughs> just woken myself up anytime I realized it. It, it yeah. pisses me off, but yeah, I um, um, I dream little enough that I write them down usually afterwards. Um, so mm -hmm. I was just looking through my notes. And one of the highlights is my downfall of Dr. Oz dream in which he <laughs> is live on air, has a breakdown, says I'm a little drunk and then started looting other shows. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great idea. Did you um, manifest his his run for governor, his failed run for governor? I must have. Is I, that, uh, yeah, I have a lot in here. They're not labeled properly, but um, yeah, I, I, I oh, anytime I dream, I usually wait because I forget dreams so quickly. So it's not it's not necessarily yeah, that I don't so dream that up. much, but I forget them so quickly that I when I wake up in the middle of the night, I just write them down as fast as possible. Um, not to not to put a, a dour uh, mood over the podcast, but I have to leave in like three to four minutes. So, uh, OK, just, um, just letting you know. <laughs> We can get out of here. Yeah, I'll, I do want to talk about this last news story. I'm just going to kick Go it, it to next week. It's really, it's really good. Um, the okay. last thing I'll just say is, hey, we're going to get some control TVs, movies, and all sorts of other stuff because Remedy has signed an agreement with Annapurna to do uh, co a strategic cooperation agreement where Annapurna is going to help fund Control 2. Remedy gets to publish, self-publish the video game, and Annapurna gets the rights to movie and TV and anything else they want to do with it. Uh, Kyle, oh, yeah. how do you feel about a control control averse? Uh, I mean, I like Annapurna. They haven't really put out too much in terms of movies, but they've been really bumping up their video game output in the last few years. Although they did put out, was it 11 minutes or 12 minutes or whatever that that, Wait that a minute. game? Isn't, isn't Annapurna, isn't that 24? 824? No, 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 no. They're different. They did. I thought, uh, I thought they were um, the same arm. I don't think so. 
No, I think A24 um, is its own game. Yeah, A24 its game. is its own. Uh, yeah. Pretty sure. Okay. I'll look into it to see if there's anything there, but for now, let's say it's not. Mm, Everyone's going to yeah, keep going, keep going, Kyle. <laughs> yeah, keep going, keep going. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it has nothing to do with A24. But yeah, they both A24 just have A games. In their name. They put A24 on. Yeah. Um, gotcha. But gotcha. Uh, yeah, no. I mean, I'm excited. I I like Annapurna, uh, other than that 11 minutes or 12 minutes game that they put oh, out that God, everyone was, was super so super hyped oh. about, and that was really bad. Uh, what was it Daisy Ridley and um and uh, uh, Willem Dafoe? Right, wasn't it? Willem Dafoe and the guy who plays P Picard, the guy who plays Professor X, young Professor X. Oh, James McAvoy. James yeah. McAvoy. Yeah, it was terrible. Jimmy Mac. Yeah, it was it was pretty it was pretty bad. Uh, but I, you know, I, I think that that's a good fit just aesthetically. Like they, they put out some stuff that I think would very much align them with, with, uh, those games. So I'm, I'm pumped. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, um, it's a good universe. Unless you really want to talk about them. I can punt the content and wish list next week. Um, yeah, let's punt them. Can, yeah, I don't think if, they're if timely. You can just copy them over. Right. That's fine. Um, yeah. Yeah, let's get the hell out of here. I don't mind. Uh, let me hit this button. Folks, thank Sorry, you so much I, for I tuning in. I just didn't in. think we were going 20 minutes over. Sorry. No, don't <laughs> worry about it. Um, we will, uh, this is Local Chat, episode 187? Yeah, I'm your host, Will Crosby. That was Kyle Bailey. Ian Gibson, subpixelfilms.com is where you can go and find out all of our content. We'll be back this week, uh, or next week, with cool stuff. But this week, Friday, uh, more fire, uh, fuck. Fallout New Vegas from Ian, 5 p.m. tomorrow. Fire fuck. Uh, and then this weekend, uh, nothing. But next week, we'll be starting up the armor stuff, I believe, and some other stuff. Local chat next week as well. Go check out our community Discord. There's links for that in the description, in the podcast description, and also on subpixelfilms.com. You can just go to that. Uh, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. This was very fun. We had a good night. And don't forget to play Star Wars Outlaws because oh. it's great and it's a solid seven and we love it. Okay, bye. Bye.